Then you you play. You guys ran. Arvin, Mike, and Phil. I already feel good. They qualify at six nine. Three guys. Didn't understand that? Let me talk to you because that was Puerto Rico. You are listening to the Three Guys Rant. Eight five five sixty nine. Three guys. That's six nine three four eight. Six nine three. Four. <laughs> All right, and we're back from beautiful Los Angeles. This is the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. He's been with here. This, this is yeah. This He's been all twice in one week. He jumps in on NBC News Radio KCAA 1050 AM. Uh, Want to reach us? Call us at eight five five six nine three guys again. Eight five five on Twitter at the Three Guys Rant, and uh, make sure to uh, watch us live at uh, the Three Guys Rant dot com. That good enough for you? Hold on, I want to see your notes, man, because you know what's okay. funny? Uh, uh, our it, special guest. They're, they're, they're not different notes. They're not different our notes. Our special it's in the studio guest, by the way, is going to be Fred Hawthorne. He's going to talk to us about politics, being an author, and living in an all white city. But, but wait, wait, what's wait. funny you is. Know, you know what? That, that, that's twice. Have you seen the look on his no, face? No, we don't, we don't what did I put, get myself into? We don't want to put words in his mouth. So. I will, I will. Right, but right. where I was going with it is, he asked earlier, "What you know, what possessed you guys to want to do this?" And what's funny is, I said, "Oh, we've been doing it for three years." But yet, I look over at Arvin. Arvin has the same notes that we've been saying for three years, but he needs to read the intro. You know what? I, I got a, I got a case of glaucoma, so I just need to make sure I always bring in my notes. Isn't that what the ganja's for? <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> I'm trying to be PC. <laughs> so, people that had to understand that understood it just. You're, fine. you're trying to be PC? What? Puerto Rican caucus? <laughs> <laughs> you know what uh, I think it's going to be a fun show um, I know last week This is actually the second week here on NBC News Radio KCAA uh, I think everybody was on their good behavior last week Talk to the general manager He said you really? know what What? Okay we'll go with that He must be having hearing problems over I, there. I, 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 I'm not even sure what you guys are commenting on Let me finish what I was saying But uh, talk to uh, general manager over there Um uh, Paul Lane, great guy. He said loves he loves what he's hearing. He said keep it up, keep up the edginess. I can always keep it up. I'm yeah, just that, wondering that, though if it, he it, wants that, his is, name. Is that what your boyfriend said? Oh, no, no. But what I'm wondering is if the, if he wants us to be mentioning his name on air. You know, I, I you don't know, know what he he didn't say he didn't. Okay. So uh, let, let's uh, let's. Leave so it now down people know when time. they call a complaint about you who to talk to. You know what? That wouldn't be the first time All that's right. happened. So uh, yeah, don't we know it? You know, he seems to be happy with what we're doing. <laughs> and the funny thing is that uh, for anybody that's been listening to us over the last couple of years, know that we're kind of raunchy and kind of uh, edgy. Not we. So uh, not we. Okay, us. You. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the Puerto Rican in you. the corner is included in that statement. Wow. But uh, anyways, at the end of the conversation, he just made it a point. He's like, hey, by the way, make sure you go on the FCC web website and <laughs> just kind of. Uh, <laughs> Re up on on what you're not supposed to say. Okay, so, so um, if, if we mess up this week, uh, it's because we haven't been to the FCC website. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to say that, but uh, I just said yeah when he when he said to go ahead and do. I that. I didn't even so. know they had a website. All right, so for those of you that live under a rock and don't watch the news and don't read the headlines like Arvin, I'm not sure if you know. No, no, no. I read headlines. I don't read the rest of the story. This is true. Yes, it is. So Arvin, do we have a new pope? Yes, and his name is uh, Eggs Benedict. What the hell is <laughs> Eggs Benedict? <laughs> wow. Can you at least tell me what country he's from? He's the first Latin Pope. Argentina, I want to say. Am I in the ballpark? You mean because you're reading over my shoulder? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really not. I'm news? really not. All right, so. I had yes, a case of glaucoma beforehand, so I can read that far. Yes, Pope Francis the first. Yeah, he, he should have gone with Eggs Benedict. That's much better than Francis. <laughs> Francisco. Um, yeah. Okay. You know, the only thing that troubled me about the new Pope... Um, and there he is. Yeah. Aside from the... Well, as it is, the, the last Pope resigned because he said he was tired, that the work was too much for him. Yeah, this guy doesn't look younger. Well, no. But what, what's, what's ironic about this Pope, he has one lung. And he's 76. And he's 76. But he had one lung removed as a child. So... And Arvin thinks we're kidding. I don't. Oh, oh, Arvin's waiting for the punchline. I'm like, where's the joke? Okay, I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> he has one lung. So uh, now let me let me ask uh, 
you gentlemen in the room here, again, I don't know if somebody was just trying to be funny or whatnot, oh, but are they saying that, that they're calling this pope the Antichrist? Because I swear every time there's a new pope, I hear the same thing. It's always those wackos out there, man, come up with crap. Nah, but who knows? That was your question? That was my question, because I've heard several people hear it, so I don't know if there's something out there. So that you've heard several people? There must, be, there must be some sort of truth behind it. I'm just asking. And, and since you're starting to believe it, you want us to validate it. No, no, no. I, I didn't say I believed it. I'm just asking. Just right. asking a question. Uh. Okay, so this is a new pope. The first. That's for Arvin's question. Oh, I thought that was for the new pope. No, that was for your the question. Latino. No. Uh, so anyway, that was the big headline. I wanted to make sure that everyone knew. I knew Arvin did, which they I find They picked him pretty quick, too. Because... Well, they picked him quick because my wife kept saying they wanted somebody before Palm Sunday. Right. Uh, they're afraid of not having a leader. But what I find most comical is that if you look at Arvin's generation and younger, they're clueless to the whole process. They're clueless as to who was picked, why he was picked, what he does. Yeah, but a lot of people don't... I mean, even a lot of Catholics don't follow it or not as religious, for lack of a better, better term, uh, no, about that process. I understand that. Like I said, yeah, I'm on a one-way ticket to hell. I make no bones about it. I'm simply saying... That there's just once again, we, we what we talk about the low information voter. This is a low information society. Well, it's like they were interviewing people over there at the Vatican, you know, hanging around. They were tourists and they were at, interviewing some Americans, and they're asking them, hey, you know, what do you think about being here? You know, it's, it's historic. You know, we we love being here. Um, wh- who do you think is going to win? I don't know. Uh, I'm not Catholic. I don't care. <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> but you know, it was just they saw a camera. Somebody put a camera in their face and. They, they felt that they had to say something. You see, the uh, problem is that usually when there's a camera for Mikey, it's usually uh, on the other end, and there's a doctor behind it. But, um, yeah, hey. that's funny. That's pretty funny. So we, we have Americans that made asses of themselves on camera. But, but that's what we're known for. If right. you, I think if you talk to any person in any other part of the world, that's their first response. You know, it was almost like jaywalking at the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's Stennis Rod. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was over there because he was he, there too. He was over there because he wanted to push for a black pope. He was there to support. They, he wanted them to elect a black pope. There's never been one, right? No. So they wanted. He wanted to, to push for the popes from Africa because there was uh, apparently there was some of the uh, the um, some of the favorites were some uh, cardinals from Africa. Well, aren't you saying that that's where they've had the most Catholic growth? growth? Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're uh, they're recruiting like crazy over there, man. They're knocking on doors, giving away <laughs> toothbrushes, whatever. They're knocking on doors. Knocking on so doors. It, it's like Jehovah's Witnesses now yes. in Africa. That's what yeah. we're going with this. All right. So anyway, everybody now knows about the Pope. Um, Arvin and Mike will just dr- drag this horse straight into the depths of hell and beat it to death. Uh, let's get on to something a lot more fun. Let's talk about our special in studio guest, Fred Hawthorne. And uh, have him say hello to the audience. How's everybody doing out there? Thanks for having <laughs> me. If you would like <laughs> to speak. See that? <laughs> Did you see that hesitation? He's like, I don't know if I want to talk to you. If anybody to Billy D. Williams Jr., a.k.a. Fred Hawthorne, you can reach us at 855-69-3-GUYS. Um, yeah, that was that was special. Um, you know, he'll, He's going to pick it up in the second part because Alan's already telling me to shut the hell up and hurry up because our first break is already upon us. But um, Already? Well, yeah, must apparently. be doing something right. Yeah, that, that's what uh, we're I'll doing. I'll go with that one. That first segment, oh, that was stellar, man. I mean, that was uh, you know Pulitzer Prize winning material right there. But uh, what do we let the, our audience know? Uh, who Fred is, man? Go ahead. Well, he's an author. He's a politician. <laughs> Future politician. Future on my politician. Way. On my way. Yeah. And an author. Uh, this the book that we're holding here. We're going to talk about is your third book. Third book. Yes. Third book. And this book, how would you describe it? It's a. Uh, it's my journey into manhood. It's my growth. In addition to that, it, uh, it, it tells candid stories on how uh, a boy from a single parent home who had an abusive father who, who grew into his ability to become a man. And it, and it took some time for me to get there, but I, I got there. And that book tells stories about the journeys and the obstacles that, over, that occurred. Oh, okay. Well, I hear, I hear the music All rolling, right. so we're going to So we're going to break, break, stick around, and we're going to continue talking to Fred Hawthorne. We'll be back on the Three Guys Rant. Transmitiendo en vivo en Los Ángeles y alrededor del mundo. 
Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready where you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra-modern, ultra-clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today, or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, hot, and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. We are the Three Guys Rant, coming to you live every Thursday from 5 to 6. You can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in, because one has Tourette's, the you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen, and you never know what's going to happen. 855-69-THREE-GUYS, G-U-Y-S, and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, so for those of you that are streaming us live, you should be at the IQ level in the room. Went up about 27 points because I finally have a proper guest that can help me because the uh, two dimwits to my right and left. Do you know what? That definitely is, bring that's it down. right. I mean, besides being an author, he's been begging for a politician or at least in the arena of politics uh -huh. for as long. There, there's your birthday. Happy birthday. Really? <laughs> I'm going with that one. My, my yeah. birthday is at Christmas. You're a little late, but we'll I'll, go I'm with it. I'm running with that. All right, so special guest, Fred Hawthorne, in studio with Don't us. Don't try to unwrap him. Him, <laughs> please don't, please no, don't. Man, please you don't. cannot read his book. I'm, I'm afraid now. I'm afraid. So let us let's talk about you know, let's talk about some of the highlights. Fred, and the okay. title of the so, book is "Why Leave Him." And no, no, but let, let me just preface something here, okay? So Fred walks in, all clean shaven, looking like you know a young Billy D. Williams. <laughs> he sent over some excerpts from his book, and you know, and again, as a good, good interviewer, I'm going to read the excerpts, excerpts, if you will, preparing for it, and all of a sudden, and mind you. This is the same gentleman who I voted for in the last general election here in our city. And, you know, Fred's got a great reputation and a good history. So I start reading the book. <laughs> and, you know, as I'm going through, it's not bad enough that I have to put up with Mike, um, who's Puerto Rican, and tells the world half black from the waist down. <laughs> but if I get That's to the introduction right. of the book, it starts off very modestly. When I walked into college on my first day, I realized I loved women. Okay, that, that's, a, that's a soft opening. So that was kindergarten for me. But. Six, sentences, oh, man. <laughs> six sentences later, he talks about being buck naked somewhere in a, in a room, <laughs> and the nicknames begin. Tripod, Anaconda, Snake, just to name a, uh, just to name a few. So Once news <laughs> spread around campus, women were throwing themselves at him. Now, the funny part, before you two get started, for 22 years that Mike has been my partner, Okay. Business. You, you, you notice this is all your right. right. business. <laughs> hey, bro, don't be ashamed, man. This is California, okay? But everywhere we used to go before he uh, got him, married with child, him, him and his partner, him, my, me, my partner and I, women were throwing themselves at him. It, used to, it was the funniest thing ever. But then I start reading this, and I'm like, okay, Mike's not alone. It's, it's you know, it's a curse. <laughs> Mike always said he was cursed. We've been blessed, Mike. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so apparently. Fred, no pun intended. Fred has intended. the He's same. So, you know, I, I, I read your book, or at least I should say I read the 17 pages you sent me before I lied that I read the whole book. Mm -hmm. And it, the title again, Why Did I Sleep With Him? Mm -hmm. 
how would you describe the book? Is it an anthology to men it, on how to handle women? Um, in addition to that, it's a, uh, it's a testament. It's a, it's a rubric for men. And more importantly, it allows women to understand how we function and how we think. Because there's always going to be a gap. Because men, men have testosterone and women have estrogen. So we're innately polar opposites. And women always ask, I don't understand. And men always say, why can't I get her? So since I've been on more in conquering, I figured I would share my gifts, share my talents to the rest of the world. And what you're seeing is you're a giver in all sense of the word. Very much so. Now there is one receiver, but now I, I, when I was younger, I was much of a giver. There was, there was a lot more receivers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there was a lot of uh, Randy Mosses and Jerry Rices in the world. You there know? you go. Yeah. Now, um, according to the book, as I read it, would you say it's the equivalent of or, or a, a, a version thereof for one of the books that came out a few years ago for women with the rules? Yeah, it's, it's similar, but that's a little bit more soft. This has no filter. It's, it's easier to understand, and, and if you're lacking – it may offend you. It may be somewhat. A well, now, see, you, you, you paused there for a second and you looked at Arvin when you said lacking. Now, <laughs> I realize his girlfriend sent over a Polaroid of the shower, but I was just curious what part were you saying he's lacking in? Fred, go ahead. It's okay. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if he's lacking from the waist down, but <laughs> I'm just here to. Uh, although this is California and I'm, I, I'm a bleeding liberal, but I. Uh, I'm not going to go there with him, but it's it's just to sh share gifts with the rest of the world, and and uh, I I think it's going to be a great benefit to men and and women alike. Okay, fair enough. So as I as again I was reading through the book, and, and so sharing an office with these two, uh -huh. it's almost like if you were writing speaking for them, uh -huh. because one of the lines on page nine starts off with, "Yes, I got confidence from sleeping with many women." Uh -huh. I would swear that was Arvin screaming that from his desk. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, on, I'm, I'm, I'm on Instagram over here. Arvin's not wearing a ring, so he, he, he's, um, uh, he's pretty carefree. But, you know, it, it's... Uh, I'll go with that. Absolutely. <clears throat> it's three paramount things that, that drives a man testosterone to the roof. Success in business, money, and the conquering of women. And, and, and women hate to hear that but because they're, they're, they're a bit more emotionless because of the, their testosterone. But... It drives a man to know that he has the ability to, to, to get a woman, and more importantly, get the woman that he truly wants. That drives a man testosterone and confidence beyond reach, beyond measure. But you know what? I, I almost got to say that I think women enjoy the game, even though they don't admit it, and in some sick way, I, I'm going to say that they enjoy the game as much as men do because if, if they get that nice guy, it goes nowhere. But when they get the guy that just walks all over them, that... To him, it's absolutely a game, and he's upfront about it. It attracts women. But yeah, but he, he Fred never said that he walks all over women. Okay, well, <laughs> no, no. So, so, you, you talk from experiences. What about what about what do you think? No, no, hold on. Let me comment on okay. that. Okay. So we talked about it off the air, and I appreciate you bringing that up, Arvin, because once again, we talked about it off. I don't think I was in the room. No, when you that worked. You worked because it, it would have scared you. But <laughs> once again, the IQ that matches your shoe size, as you've made a statement on open air to all the women that are listening. Fred goes on. Uh, we're we're going we're gonna to skip one of the other parts. I will come back to you because I'm going to hate this part because it's going to validate Arvin. I'm but just, you know what? Fred I'm, has a chapter called Chivalry is Dead. Arvin can't even pronounce the word. I'm going to say, stuff. I'm going to say, I'm pretty sure she's alive because I saw her on stage <laughs> last night on, that gre on the greasy pole. She's beautiful, isn't she? She is. <laughs> I, I have no idea what her face looks like, but, but you she's know what? a beautiful girl. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what I wanted okay. to ask is that. According to the way I read it, mm -hmm. it's almost the epitome of the military format where your whole book doesn't necessarily tear them down, mm -hmm. but you do say break them down into the categories. And then because of your chapter on chivalry, it goes all the way back to build them back up. And you, you can get into the entire situation. As a man, we always want to be in control. But there is two quotes that... Uh, I, I highlight in the book that that grandma always tells a granddaughter, "Chivalry is dead, and there are few good men in the world." And uh, when a woman hear this, if we men have the ability to have the ability of perception, we can get women. And and that's why what leads me to chivalry is dead. It costs nothing to have chivalry as a man. Open up doors. Uh, assume the uh, assume to be protective of her. Uh, Oh, make sure she's sitting first. Uh, call her by her last name. You know, that, that's that's what that means. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. For, for, for you two, you know, I was gonna for you say two draconian. I was gonna say uh, Neanderthals. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, but when, until you got to the name part, because just to make sure you never <laughs> put your foot in it, it's all a game. Arm you, you Arm always, it's a always, game. You always just say baby, just to make uh, sure you don't call out the wrong. Right. Name. What's funny is uh-huh. as, I, as I was reading this, uh-huh. and again, I, I highlighted, I highlighted the one section also that I fascinated towards the end. It's a look her square in the eyes as you two are having dinner. And in your own way, tell her, my grandfather, father, uncle. Now, if you're Mexican, it would be my brother's neighbor's cousin, sister's <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, boyfriend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Taught me there's only one way to treat a woman. The right way. The right way. That's the with right the back way. of the head. Oh, I'm so, sorry. Not the back <laughs> of the head. <laughs> but these two, as far as Mike is concerned, he's got a term for it. It's called mas puto. Okay? <laughs> Arvin, on the other Wait. hand, says it's a waste of time because to get those words out and hit his mind, he's like naked already. No, no. Mm-hmm. But, the, but the thing is, Treat her the right way. The definition of the right way is different for everybody. It, quite possibly. <laughs> I, I mean, quite, there's rules to this game. I wrote you a manual, a step by step book. You know, but it, it's uh, it's the right way. Yes, meaning that we're all creatures of God. We're all made in His image. But the rule of the game will never change. Men right. and women. Right. Yes. If God looks like these two. We in trouble. We in trouble. <laughs> I'm sorry, did he cut you off? <laughs> he, he took a second look no, at you. No, there's, uh, there's rules to this game, and and I, I, I wrote it for both ends of the spectrum, whether you're a single man and you want to date multiple women or whether you're a married man and you need a reminder that, that your wife is beautiful and she's a sexual being in addition to being a mother, in addition to being your, your son or daughter's mother, in addition to being softball mom, volleyball mom, you know, Saturday morning soccer mom, she's, she's also a sexual being, and... And men tend to forget that as we get older because the older we get, the lower our testosterone gets, the more we have to work, the more, the less we're home. So we tend to forget that. So both ends are the spectrum. If you want multiple women, I wrote a chapter on the Fantastic Four. Every single man should have a Fantastic Four. You know, you should have the... the should have a stable of women. That's all I'm hearing. A stable <laughs> A stable, of women. yeah. We wait, got wait, wait, wait. No, but what, what do you mean by the Fantastic Four? You can have a, a, a woman that that loves to cook. You can have a woman that loves to be romance. You can have a woman that's great in bed. She, she always wants it. And you can have the woman that, that's just always there for you. She's emotionally, she's emotionally your pillar, you know? Because in order for you to be great, you have to have many experiences, you know? And, and I, I attribute my ability to, to treat my woman that I, that I fell in love with as great as possible is because I extracted all these principles and all these learning curves that I got from women I said, you know, this is what makes a woman smile. You know. Okay, let me ask you a question on that. But again, it is slamming these two over here. (laughs) But none none of it is untrue. Uh So, for example, on Valentine's Day, Uh I'll remind my brother to my left here. Uh Did you pick up? I'm Godfather of his child. I said, you pick up my comadre some flowers. Great. His response is, no, man, the light changed. (laughs) 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 Oh, that's funny. (laughs) So. I, mean, <laughs> I was I was digging for my wallet. Ah, the light uh, changed. The light changed. <laughs> so you know the uh-huh. whole thing. Was I couldn't say that, right? <laughs> what, 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 could I say something like that? No. Uh, okay. you, <laughs> the light changed. Well, well you could. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is, as I'm reading, as I was reading the, you know, the uh-huh. the, the, the book, you the see, pages you, you see, over. That's a good husband right there. Not only was he going to get flowers, he was going to get oranges at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to bring flowers okay. and dinner. But now, on the other hand, then the one to my right, as again, as I as I read what you wrote here, mm-hmm. you tell Arvin. Did you call, I'm sorry, his friend, you know, did you call so-and-so? Uh-huh. What for? Uh-huh. I'm like, why? No, we but, we broke up on the 13th. <laughs> I'll see her on the 16th. Yeah, right. the, so, go ahead. Would you help them? That, that's, I mean, that was the other reason I enjoyed reading what you wrote. He's starting to say there's no hope for these two. <laughs> no, R. You want to be in control. See, a man who lacks control lacks direction. You know, so... When you want, when you what are you looking at, Phil? <laughs> you want to be in control. You want you don't want her to say goodbye. You want to be able to want. You want to be the person to say goodbye. Oh, I did, and I said, "I'll see you uh, on the 16th. I said hello. I said hello on the sixteenth. You know what? what? We're gonna continue this after this break. Wonderful. You're listening to the Three Guys Rant with Fred Hawthorne in studio on NBC News, 10:50 a.m. KCAA, Riverside, and Orange County. We'll be right back. In Los Angeles, y alrededor del mundo. We comment, get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. 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 
Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And you can listen to us every Thursday at 2 p.m. right here on KCAA Radio. What do we talk about, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. And we <laughs> dance a whole lot. In fact, if you want to watch us every day, you can go to AaronAndKellyLive.com. That's AaronAndKellyLive.com. Check it out. What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Laza with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. We are the Three Guys Rant, coming to you live every Thursday from 5 to 6. You can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in, because one has Tourette's, the you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen in. You never know what's going to happen. 855-69-THREE-GUYS, G-U-Y-S, and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm, I'm audio. Dude. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break. I'm going to turn it over to Arvin. He's got a special caller on line one. So before I screw up his name, give me one second here. All the callers <laughs> are special. I'm sorry, and I dropped the phone while I was doing it. Arvin, go ahead. I do. Is this uh, Andrew? It is. Hey Andrew, how you doing? You're you're on there here uh, on KCAA News Radio uh, under NBC. I guess I said that one backwards, <laughs> didn't I? Yeah, you're all honked up. <laughs> so Andrew, why don't you tell us a little bit uh, about uh, the reality awards? Well, we're really excited. There's finally recognition for reality TV, and we're ready to throw a big event uh, in West Hollywood coming up on April 11th. Just kind of a little background. Uh, we we had the industry, the professionals of the reality, represent the academy, and they kind of narrowed down these votes. And, and now, five of these two categories is now live for a public vote, which is really exciting. So, public can head over to realityonceatawards.com and and vote for their favorite shows. Andrew, now let, let me ask you, if, if I'm understanding correctly, this is an award show for the Snookies, the JWows, <laughs> all those of the world. Yep, Duck so, Dynasty represented, Honey Boo Boo's represented. That's what I was going to say. So Honey Boo Boo's, uh, <laughs> her name's been thrown into the hat. Hold on, it has. Hold on, hold on. Dollar makes me holler, Honey Boo Boo. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Honey, Honey Boo Boo is up for their fair share of awards. Um, they were a very big show in 2012. So uh, we're, we're happy they're on board and they're uh, on, the, on the ballot. And, and you have categories for uh, the different shows, the dif- different formats? Yeah, we want to recognize uh, people behind the camera and in front of the camera. A, a lot goes behind these shows, and, and you watch these shows on TV, and, and you might not realize that there's, there's a crew of 150 working daily for months on this show just to make an episode come to life. So it, we're, you know, there's categories from Badass Crew uh, that kind of recognize those people that are really going out in the trenches to speak. Andrew, you know what? Actually, we ha- it seems like we have uh, Kristen on the other line. Let me see if we can uh, try to bring her on uh well, we have you on the air. Oh, great. Kristen, are you with us? Leave it. Leave it. <laughs> Hello? I think Phil just hung up on both of them. <laughs> no, I'm still here. Oh, he's still there. Kristen, you didn't come on? Give me one second. All right. <coughs> wow, nothing like technical difficulties while on the air, huh? Talk, well, about, talk about reality radio. Kristen, you're still not there? Yeah, okay, okay well, Andrew, wh- when is the show again? Can you? What was the date? April 11th? Yeah, it's April 11th in West Hollywood. We're holding at... Um Kristen? <laughs> I think I lost them both. Hello? Oh, hey, there's there Kristen. Kristen, how you doing? Hi. You hung up on him. I hung up on him. <laughs> I think you hung up on Andrew. How you doing, Kristen? Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Kristen, I'm going to put you home for one second. No problem. And I hung up on her. <laughs> one of these, <laughs> yeah, one yeah, of these yeah. days we'll get it right. Andrew, you back with us? This is Andrew. Andrew, <laughs> sorry, man. We have we we had a new phone system installed here about four years ago, and we're still learning to use it. <laughs> hey, Andrew, I gotta say, one of the, I, I like the fact that you're gonna be recognizing the people behind the camera because mm-hmm. I gotta say, those people are warriors. You know, I gotta say, I've heard some stories about 
the people behind the camera and, and the routine and the schedule that they keep, I don't think I could do it all the time and the hours and everything that they get put through. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's pretty rough. And even on Deadliest Cats, if you guys watch that, or even Whale yeah. Wars, some of these people, they're, they're, they're in the trenches. They're, they're with these crew that are going through these same conditions, and they're living on these boats. These, you know, these are cameramen, and these are you know, producers, and this is a, a new environment for them. So it's really, I'm really excited. So we now, can, uh, I mean, just real, just real quick, I know uh, it's a little bit... Andrew, we're going to try something one more time. Oh. Give me a second here. <laughs> okay, how about now? Kristen, do we have you? Kristen? Andrew? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Andrew? <laughs> you know uh, what? I, I wish you could see the people here behind the scenes just cracking up at Phil. Andrew? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's back. All right. We you know what? Let, let's just line. stick to Andrew. <clears throat> Fair enough. Kristen, if, 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 you, if you're listening, we apologize. <laughs> we can't seem to get the phone to work. So right, going, I'm so, sorry, you so, want to no, no, the show? So, so, it, so it's, it's, it's uh, the actual reality stars as well as the behind, behind the camera that are going to be nominated, correct? Yeah, there's, you know, for something like Most Dynamic Cast, which is, it'll be going to the cast, but it's also going to those casting directors that built that cast. These these casting directors, the ones that went out on the streets, or they, they they went out and found these people. You know, like the Jersey Shore cast, for right. example. So, so the, you know, what look where Snooki is now. <laughs> is this this is the second annual? Um, this is the first annual. So we're I, very excited to be got, launching this, this yeah, new award show. I gotta say, I can totally see this taking off. Hold on, man. Alan's yelling at me. We're gonna try one more time. <laughs> no, don't do it. He says, "Put line one on." All right, I'm gonna read the instructions that go here, here, there. Kristen? Kristen? I'm here. Hey! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. In 2013, we got our four-year-old phone system to work. I'm sorry to both of you in advance. Don't worry about it. We're good. We're good. All right. Now we you know what? You know what? I, I, I'm throwing uh, the engineer's name into into this uh, whole voting process. He should win for what he just accomplished. I agree. Well, I, that's why I'm saying the people behind the scenes. I yeah, mean, because exactly. because of, because apparently so, the talent in front of the camera is just a bunch of morons. Well, what's funny is I don't know that word talent at all. You're the one that keeps calling us talent. If it wasn't for the boy on the can, board, we're hi, dead. Can we talk to Christian now? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> hi, Christian. Hi there. How are you guys? Good, good. So I'm assuming you know Andrew. Yeah, we know each other uh, <laughs> quite well. Right, I want to make sure this wasn't a blind date or something. something. <laughs> So, so the the show is coming up. It is the first annual, and was this uh, you guys' idea? Yeah, um, you know, I can't hear Andrew, by the way, but so, but if you guys can hear me, then I'm good. Yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, yeah, we basically came up with the idea um, kind of as we went. A couple of years ago, I had thought about it, and I thought it would work, and nobody had done it in those couple of years since. And so, when I found, you know, I kind of. All worlds collided, and I found the right crew of people that would be able to make this vision come to life. But, you know, I had kind of like the bones of the idea, and it's all come to life because of Andrew and RealityWanted.com and uh, Kim Roos and Megan Firestone and John Barra. Like, our whole team has really just made this whole thing work. So it's amazing what we've accomplished. That, that is good. So now, did this idea come to you before? Um, yeah, both. I mean, I work behind the scenes. I work okay. in the industry. And I also love reality television. So, you know, it was one of those things where you, you get to see um, people in other industries and they get to win awards for their accomplishments for the year. And nobody in reality, reality television was winning awards. Nobody was getting, you know, I could have found, uh, my background is casting, and I could have found the most ridiculous, newsworthy contestant of all time. And there was never going to be something that, you know, gave me the props, like, you know, thanks for bringing this person to the television sets of America, you know, so that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to make sure that everybody feels like they're contributing to something worthwhile. Well, that is pretty awesome. I know we've helped with dozens, I don't want to say hundreds and thousands, but let's go with a dozen casting calls over the last couple of years here in L.A. for different reality TV shows. And I tune in just to see if somebody we got on the show has actually made it on. I, I don't think we've ever helped in that aspect. But uh, I know one of the questions that Phil's just dying to ask, 
are any of the Kardashians going to win some kind of award? You know, that's, that's, the, that's the funny thing is um, their, their agents just reached out to us yesterday saying, you know, give us the invites for them, and they, they, they're going to present them uh, personally to them, which is exciting news for us. Um, the Kardashians are obviously very big in reality TV, um, and our favorite, uh, Khloe Kardashian, is up for female TV personality. No, so right no, now. no, no. It's all about Kim's <laughs> booty. That's all. Just, I want a category <laughs> yeah. for booty, Kim's booty. That's it. So not even Kim, just, just Kim's her booty. booty. That's it. She's not allowed to speak, ever. Maybe we'll add that category next year. <laughs> I, I, I'm going with that. That should be a rule across the board. No woman should speak, but... <laughs> favorite body part. There you go. <laughs> that should be a new category. I yeah, like it. Abs, situations, abs, Kim's booty, you know. <laughs> All right, well, I, I, know we're, I know we're coming down here to, to uh, the end of the segment, but uh, if at any point, if you guys ever want to come in studio, I believe you guys are in L.A., if you guys want to send, yeah. send over any reality stars, we'll, we'll take you guys off. Except Honey Boo Boo. When is the show? April 11th, so we got time. April 11th on... TV? Uh, it's, it's a Thursday, you can, April 11th. You can watch it live online. Um, you can go to realitywantedawards.com. We will be streaming live from the red carpet. It's an interactive feed, so you'll be able to Twitter in or even call in and interact with the celebrities on the red carpet. Hey, wh- what do we do to get our press credentials to be on the red carpet, yeah, I, man? I, I was going to ask, where exactly are our three seats going to be <laughs> uh, at this event? How close to the stage exactly are I mean, I mean, if, if we can do on stage, that's even better. No. <laughs> Next to Kim. That's all I need. And make I'm sure Kim Kanye's laughing. out. Uh, if we, if, we, if we can manage to weasel our way in, I'm there. Yes, All right, so we're going we're gonna to link to your site, and we're going to promote it on, on our uh, social media as well. Yeah, great. great. And, okay. And people people can go out and vote at realitywantedawards.com. And just this week, within 24 hours, we've got 100,000 people visiting our website. So this info is, is getting out, and it's getting big, and, and everyone should go cast their votes. That's awesome. Outstanding. Well, best of luck to both of you. We look forward to seeing it. Thank Thanks you. We'll talk so to you guys soon. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and tweet to us who you're voting for and tweet to them, tweet to your shows. It's this, the Twitter world is blowing up with Reality Awards, so it's at Reality Awards TV. Well, Outstanding. Uh, maybe we'll both. talk before next year's show, and uh, by then we'll we'll know how to use our, our phone system. <laughs> All, right, <yeah. laughs> All right. We'll be in studio next time. All right. Sounds good. Take care, both of you. Thank you for calling in. Thanks, All right. Guys. Thanks. Bye, Bye, guys. I gotta wow, say, talk, talk about recovery. That's I, how you I, do it. I gotta say that in terms of reality shows, as I was, you know, listening to them talk, we gotta come up with a few new ones. You know, we we'll have one. You know, it's called like watching grass grow. Hey, we'll hey, have you, another you, one you watching want, paint you wanna, dry. You wanna you wanna start uh, trademarking this kind of stuff before? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I'm just saying. No dude, idea. I, with some of the stuff that's out there, the other day I, I caught uh, the tail end of one called Shipping Wars. Right. People moving yeah. crap across the country. That's a reality show. That's exciting. Uh, apparently what, it what is. Why don't we put one together? Call it uh, the the, uh, the pickup artist, and we have uh, Fred. <laughs> I can Fred? be the leading man. There, there you go. go. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for his wife to call I, in. I'm and all all this, but, you know, <laughs> you know what? It, it's it's call it and say what you'll say, but uh, I got to say that I can genuinely see that taking off. I think it'll be huge next year for it's, it's already getting momentum this year. It's gonna take off. The awards, the awards, the show. awards, the awards. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's enough reality crap. Out, but I mean, uh, <laughs> shows out stuff, there, stuff, stuff, stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. entertainment. I mean, come on, yeah. we're all part of it. Uh, why would we not want to? You know, the ones that are wow, coming, uh, the ones the, that, that are, that are so coming forced. up, and I don't know why, because every time I ca- I'm changing channels and I stop there by accident, I want to shoot myself. Is the Duck Dynasty? But yet, you seem <laughs> you seem to stop there by accident a lot. Yeah, did you Speak- see their ratings? No, they're Off like the highest the chart. Have you, have you seen this show? No, I haven't seen it, but Steve so Harvey promotes that show quite it is often. Does he really? Yeah. I, I would. Those, I, yeah. yeah I think. <laughs> Four country hillbilly. Really? Re- yeah. Yeah. People are probably fast. can't live themselves. Yeah. You know. All right. We'll be back after the break. You listen to a three guys rant. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. 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 
What up, foodie freaks? It's Chef Bev Lazo with the Culinary Trend Show. Join me and my brigade every Thursday night from 8 to 9 p.m. where we will be cooking up some crazy stuff that will give you the appetite for discussion. It's all about the good food, good friends, and good times. Only here on RantRadioNetwork.com. We are the Three Guys Rant, coming to you live every Thursday from 5 to 6. You can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in, because one has Tourette's. The you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen, and you never know what's going to happen. 855-69-THREE-GUYS. G-U-Y-S, and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And you can listen to us every Thursday at 2 p.m. right here on KCAA Radio. What do we talk about, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. And we <laughs> dance a whole lot. In fact, if you want to watch us every day, you can go to AaronandKellyLive.com. That's AaronandKellyLive.com. Check it out. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Hot topics and headlines. Love, doctors. Politics. The Three Guys Rant starts now. The Three Guys Rant. All right, hey, for hey, those hey. of you that don't want to kill yourselves after listening to us for 45 minutes, I had to cut Arvin off because he was trying to be there. <laughs> We're going to let Fred Hawthorne plug um, what he'd like to talk Arvin? about. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Nobody wants to plug Arvin. No, 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 no. And all then right, right. Uh, Arvin's got a few topics that he's dying to talk about. So and we'll let Fred what's, go first. What's the phone number in case you want to talk to Fred? 855-69-3-GUYS. Please call in, guys. Call Please in. call in. <laughs> he's like, I'm tired of talking to these three knuckleheads. <laughs> all right, That's the book, not the word he had. The book is entitled, Why Did I Sleep With Him? And I know it's a catchy title. And it's actually for both <laughs> men and women. Uh I was going to say, because Mike says the exact same thing every Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after Monday morning, go to uh, fredhawthorne.com. That's www.fredhawthorne.com. No funny spelling. And uh, you can go ahead and order the book, and we'll get it out to you within the next three to five days. And uh, um, I, I'm just really excited for this book, and I think it's going to be real instrumental in whether you're a single man, married man, engaged man, or if you're a woman trying to figure out what men think and how men do it. This book is this book is essential for you, Fred. Let's talk about your political career. Absolutely, you have an upcoming uh, in 2014. Which you is are around running the corner. for about a year away. City year council away. here city in Woody again. Yeah, Whittier. absolutely, absolutely. Now, in the particular city that we're running, I mean, for those of you that are logged in and streaming, um, and I know it's a big secret because we've only said it four times, but Fred is black, <laughs> and our city what? is ratings is, just went. Up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like Especially that. with the women. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in a city that, what would you estimate? 99%? 99.9%? Non-black. Non-black? Easily. Yeah, I mean. Easily. Easily. I, I knocked on every every high propensity voter, every every person I could reach, and I would and I can count on all four of my extremities how many how many black people I reached out to. So it, it, it's, it, it's definitely challenging, but, but it's it, it was a message I, w I was I was sending out, and and I'm grateful that uh, the city of Woody embraced me. It took time; it's, it's going to take time. You know, you, you don't knock down a tree, but, but with one swing of the axe, you know. And and I genuinely believe that I'm I'm going to throw a few axes at this tree, April 9th, 2014, and we're going to knock it down. And and Woody is going to be again a great city, and we're just going to take it to higher lengths and 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 just. Yeah. Now, do you yeah. feel race played a role last time? I I believe it did. I I believe it did because when we, I had to prove myself, you know, um, in addition to being a minority, in addition to being black, in addition to being young, I had to prove myself, you know. Um, it, it I didn't think it was enough that I graduated from Whittier College. I, I grew up my entire adulthood in the city of Whittier. I love the city of Whittier. I, I didn't think that was enough for voters as a whole. Um, they, they had, they, I believe some of them had issues trusting me, but now I, I'm in Whittier and I go on Uptown and I, I hear people say, Fred, you're running again? Fred, I go to, I go. To I, I do gotta say that um, city events, chamber events, uh -huh. when I have gone in the uh -huh. past, you were always there. I, I had to. I had always to. Always there. Got to be consistent. Right. You know, have to be consistent. Absolutely. 
I, I go, go ahead. You're you're itching. No, to say no, something. no, no. Okay. No, <laughs> no I was, I'm sorry. I was sniffing there. Uh-huh. Um, but no, so to go back to me, and again, because Mike and I have this argument constantly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. For the record, everyone knows who listens to us. We both voted for Obama. Mm-hmm. But Mike is convinced that because of the color of his skin, mm-hmm. certain things aren't getting done in Washington. Because they don't want a black man to get credit. You're damn right. Okay. That's and I'm just that's curious that's to hear, not from a half black, according to you. <laughs> but on the waist down. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just echoing what you see. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I got Bill, to go with that. Can you, okay. put, can you put the tongue back in your mouth? I'm gonna have to. What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, it's, it's it's obvious that that racism plays a huge part in our society. As as mentioned, how do you tell a a first grader that Christopher Columbus discovered America when there are already thousands upon thousands, maybe millions of people here already here? You know, so 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 when some when a child hears that and they're of that color, that's not of Christopher Columbus. How did he control me? That makes me organically inferior. So systemic racism will always, will always be in America, but it's our jobs as God-fearing, loving people to embrace everyone. You know, and, and that's what's great about the state of California. You know, it's, 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 it's probably the most beautiful state in our union, meaning that gays have rights, black men have rights, Latinos have rights. It's, it's not to the point where all, we, we have our battles. But and, and yes, go ahead. But to your point, what you just said, one of the comments, and, and Arvin will make a, a statement, and it's never met racially. Uh-huh. It's just we, I make fun of him because he identifies certain things by ethnicity. Uh-huh. Uh, Gabrielle Union, for example, mm-hmm. I love her to death. Beautiful. Okay, to me, that she's a woman. Mm-hmm. But Arvin will walk in and say, "Oh, who's that black girl on the screen?" Uh-huh. And, and I tell and him, "She's that, hot." No, no, <laughs> she's not. Hot. She? But but she's my question woman. is uh-huh. to what Fred just talked about. Fred, Fred you know, he, he gave you the different segments or the cross segments uh-huh. that are available. Do you ever see a time? When somebody will stop looking at Latinos, Black, Asian, where it's more of just a people. I can answer that right now. I can answer that. Go I'm gonna go back to what I always say: when the lights are off, we're all the same color. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your answer. We we'll have to wear extremely dark shades. That's my answer. I, I don't think in America and not in our lifetime we will see that. Definitely not in our life. Well, we live in a capitalist society, so it's compete, compete, compete. So you have to find deficiencies in your opponent. So if if his deficiency reigns paramount up upon your audience, you're going to highlight his deficiencies. You know, if, if Congress is majority white, you're going to say he wasn't born in America. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. it, 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 it makes no sense. But, you, but to your point, if, if we are now, again, going stronger than ever with a capitalist society, mm-hmm. aren't we looking at green? It's all about the dollar and not about the man? No, it's about who's making the green, who's perceived to have the right to but be we've at that seen level. The list. When you've got that heavy set Carlos Slim Mexican as the richest man right. in the world, we already know it's not a But where did he make his rich. money? Telecom. No, where? And it wasn't in America. It was in Mexico. Okay, it was in Mexico. Right. He's the same color as everybody else. He's exploiting over there. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know that he's exploiting <laughs> anybody. <laughs> you know. He's got a monopoly and everything around there. But Carlos Slim has tried to come here to America and make billions here and he's always failed. That's okay, he's had some issues here. So but, see, but that's what I'm saying, though. But I look at it. He's the president of our country. Mm-hmm. We've elected him twice now. He's our leader. Absolutely. He's our leader. Mm-hmm. And Mike still is convinced. But here, there's a is. call for Fred. Hold on one second. Who is it? Go ahead. Caller? One of these right? Well, you just have yes, a horrible hello. time with oh, folks. Stuff. I know. Go ahead, caller. Who do you want to talk to? Well, first of all, you guys need to fix your problem with your phones. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a slam right out of the gate. I know. That's horrible. What? <laughs> No, uh, I have a comment and I have a question. Um, first comment is for Fred. I think you should do a class, maybe even starting here in the city of Whittier, teach men how to treat women. I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> and you could be my, you could be my co-host. People, I, <laughs> yeah, there you go. I think many people would benefit from that. Thank you. Thank and then you. my question to you is, do you think there's anything, in, you know, anything specific that changed the reason why chivalry is dead? Shiver, it's all about perception. You know, it's uh, w- when men get together, we talk about how quickly we can get it. When when women get together, they talk about how long it can last. You know, so from a male standpoint, our job is to get in and get out as quickly as possible. You know, and and it, it's real challenging to be both. And my book is going to remind men that it's important to be both. It's important to take your time. Don't 
don't miss that because if you miss that you might miss her you know and and the goal of the goal of a man is not to miss her you know is, is to walk alongside and be great leaders you know and uh, I genuinely believe that this book why did I sleep with him I thank you for the call is gonna is it, gonna it's gonna bring chivalry back because chivalry should never be dead and uh, I, I, I think it's one of the key components to manhood as well did that make you feel better now <laughs> well, she, th thanks, well sure thank you for calling. Thanks is, for the is call. She crying? Oh no! no. All right, <laughs> have a good one. Did I make you cry? Are you having a moment? Are you having? No, I'm I appreciate not it. A <laughs> All right. No, you know, you know, I, I think it's important, especially for young men who don't have those kind of manners. I mean, and I don't know if it's manners or if it's, or is it chivalry? I don't know. But whenever you know, if, if we're out and about and somebody someone actually opens the door for you or someone leaves, you know, kind of if you're leaving, exiting somewhere and they kind of hold the door for you, you're like, wow, that's that's impressive. You know, to me, even if it's somebody young, like a 15-year-old, a 20-year-old, I would think, wow, that's impressive, you know, because nowadays you don't see that very often. I, I'm, I just, I'm just going to say, I don't know what that says about me because I'll just stand well, there no, and, and I'll tell the and I'm like, <laughs> showing her my O face. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You know what I'm talking about. That's Arvin oh. right, right there, man. That's Arvin's whole I was, life. I was going to say, I, I'll stand around and be like, woman, aren't you going to open the door for me? <laughs> <laughs> oh my like, God. I don't got all night. Let's That's do this. The problem is right so the door there. never opens. Hey, caller, thanks for calling in. we got to wrap up the show. Thank you. Bye. All right, so we've only got two minutes left. Brett, tell them how they can find you, where they can reach you, and where they can see you. Thank you. Um, feel free to hit me on Facebook. My name, Fred Hawthorne. Uh, just Google in the search. Also, go to fredhawthorne.com, or you can Google why did I sleep with him, and I should be the first link. And uh, if you go ahead and order, uh, the book will be there probably in the next three to five days. But its official release is April 9th, according to my publisher. So, but since I have copies, <laughs> feel free to uh, feel free to to go ahead and and, um, and and hit me up on the web. And also, April 13th in the city of Whittier at Half Off Books on Greenleaf, I have I have my my first official book signing, and uh, it, it's going to be great. Uh, I genuinely believe that this book is gonna is gonna exceed hopefully my my expectations, and more importantly, it's going to be beneficial to all who read. You know, I got I got to say, sir, my hat is off to you because if you. you can Google why did I sleep with him and you're the first thing to pop up, uh -huh. you're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> According to her, right? <laughs> Guys, and I do want to say, again, I want to plug the April 13th. They're April 13th. April 13th. If you've never been, for those of you that are in and around the city of Whittier, the Half Off Bookstore is one of the last remaining independent bookstores. It's gone through a few owners and they've done a great job of keeping it Fabulous. alive. I know they say that books are dead. Um, I don't believe that for a second. They have a lot of old books, a lot of great nostalgic stuff there that if you ever wanted to collect anything or find something from your youth, you can definitely find it there. Now, on that date, at what time are you going to be 2 over? 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Okay. To April 13th, 2 p.m. in Uptown Whittier at Half Off Books. Outstanding. Bailey and Greenleaf. Outstanding. We want to thank uh, Fred Hawthorne for uh, putting up with us in studio. We want to thank the callers. We want to thank KCAA for continuing to keep us on the air. NBC News Radio. 1050 AM in Riverside and Orange County. Have a great week. We'll look forward to hearing from you next week. Take care. Late. <laughs>